we're going to make a die non-destructively die that's just singular for dice so we're going to make a six-sided die and we're going to make it using modifiers instead of actually modeling with uh, vertices edges and faces so i have a, a quick example of what the end product will look like right here so we're going to be using the boolean modifier we're going to cut a sphere out of the cube and we're also going to apply a bevel and we're going to apply that bevel very carefully uh, if you watch the video i made about the limitations on beveling one of the problems in this is that right here these faces are very small and they're going to limit the size of the bevel which means your outer bevel will have to be very sharp. And so what we're going to do is actually two separate bevels. We're going to pre-bevel and then post-bevel. So let's get started here. So here's just standard cube, six-sided. I'm going to start by adding a bevel modifier. You can change these parameters to what you want. I'm just going to do something that looks reasonable to me. I kind of wish I was looking at an actual six-sided dice at the moment. Um, you can get one out and look at it if you'd like to. So I'm just going to go with this as my outer bevel right here, maybe a little bigger. All right, so I feel pretty good about that. You could, of course, crank that up if you want to, depending on the smoothness you're going for. I, you're going to see later we're going to create a bevel, and there'll be... Uh, the size of the faces we're going to create later, in my opinion, should be similar to the size of these faces in the corners. All right, so we have this beveled here. Let's collapse that. I'm going to add now a sphere into here. Make sure you're in object mode, not in edit mode. So add, going with the UV sphere. And I need to move it up on the Z. Oh, that's rotation, that's not move, move up on the Z. And I want it to be perfectly set right here. And if you look, that's almost one. One would be perfectly lined up here. I think the default's 32, 16. For me, that was too much because I want my bevel to do some of that smoothing later. So you could do 32, 16, but I'm gonna do 16, six. Uh, the segments, to me should be divisible by four because if they're not it's not going to line up nicely let me get the z axis view oh, the other z axis view uh, it won't line up nicely 13 so you don't want this to be a prime number i think it's probably easier to see if it's eight so basically one points towards each corner and then one in between if you did eight 16 they'll just be twice as many um, eight might work depending on your beveling. All right, so we have our sphere. This one didn't need to be rotated, but you're going to see when we do the side that you will need to rotate it. The origin is right here in the middle. That may or may not be good. Uh, for I think the top, I'm just going to do a one here, and that should be fine. All right, let's get it in the right collection. All right, we're now going to add a boolean the default is difference and the object i want to use is this sphere now i'm going to hide the sphere so you can see the effect so you see that now there's a basically a half sphere missing which is the basic shape i want but i want that to be beveled as well so we're now going to add another bevel modifier well Let's first talk about why this isn't being beveled. That's because it, it's applying the bevel first. It goes from top to bottom. So it first bevels before this Boolean hole ever existed. And that's why you don't see around here being beveled. If I switch the order, now everything is beveled. However, the limitation is the beveling, uh, what do they call that? The amount is limited by the size of the segments inside the circle which may may or may not be good so i just switched the order back so it bevels first then does a boolean i'm going to now add a second bevel and if you notice it's not affecting the edge here and that's because the angle if i crank the angle way down to like one degree it affects basically every single edge uh, the default's 30 that's pretty good. 
I'll leave it at 30. Uh, if you get too small, it will bevel the difference between, let's see, oh, there we go. It'll bevel the difference between the uh, two adjacent segments in this circle here. And so that's why I don't want to go too small on this uh, angle right here. So again, if I do 15, you'll see that it bevels quite a bit more than you probably want. So I like that default 30. Uh, now the size, I do need to play with that a little bit because I want it to look more uniform. And I'm pretty happy with this. You could crank the segments up and then adjust the size a little bit. Actually, I was happier with what it was before with three. All right, I think that looks pretty uniform right there. If you want this to look smoother, you do need to uh, probably adjust your sphere and uh, increase the number of segments here in your beveling. But this is pretty good for what I want. I don't want to go too high poly. All right, so we took care of the top. You can make your sphere visible, and now you can kind of see very nicely where it would have fit in and where that beveling starts right there. So let's go ahead and do the side over here. So we're in edit mode. That's not good. We want to be in object mode. So I create a new object. Shift A, create a UV sphere. Ico sphere is not going to give you that nice intersection the way the UV sphere did. Uh, so you probably want a uh, UV sphere. I'm using, of course, the same segments and rings. Same radius. Uh, I did shrink the radius down. I think the radius defaults is to a 0.5, which would be massive uh, and totally not work here. All right, location. I do need to bring it out. So let's look at the X axis and you can just shift it by dragging here. So I need negative one for the X. If you did adjust the size of your cube at the beginning, this won't just be positive and negative one for the X, Y, and Z coordinates to be on the edge. Uh, I do need to rotate this. So if you look, I need this single point to be sticking out, and that'll be a rotation on the Y axis of 90 or negative 90. All right, there we go. We could just and I'll put that in the same collection. We could just add another, let's see, Boolean difference with sphere nine, and then make sphere nine invisible. All right, you can see the beveling's not being applied because the order is important. If I drag the bevel below, now it gets beveled because the Boolean modifier was applied first, the bevel second. If you're gonna have lots of Booleans, I'll call this a Boolean one. The side I'm making right now, let's make three dots on this side. I think that'll be uh, a good way to see how to lay these out. Now I already made sure that these weren't too big so I can easily fit three here, five if I need it, or three and three to make uh, six sided. So make sure these aren't too big or you're not gonna be able to fit them all on here. All right, so let's go back to the sphere I'm now going to make the sphere visible. We're in object mode and I'm going to duplicate the sphere. Shift D to duplicate. And now I get to drag it around. So I'm going to drag it to approximately where I want it. Now I failed for a couple reasons. It's too far in. So what coordinate is that? That's the X coordinate. Uh, I think we got zero. There we go. Uh, these objects, their origin is not set to the world origin. You may want to do that. So you can right click set origin to uh, origin to 3D cursor, which I have not moved off the origin. If you ever do move your 3D cursor, it's shift S and you can go cursor to world origin just to make sure it's there. Hit this object, right click set origin to 3D cursor. So now their origins are at the center right here. That's important because when I'm looking at the transform, you hit N to get this uh, menu out. You also can hit this little arrow guy right there. So the, oh, 
I did not apply all my transforms. That's important as well. Let's apply all transforms and object apply all transforms. Okay. So it's now using the offset right here. Uh, set origin to geometry. If you're using the origin right in the middle, you're gonna see the location right here. And this is how we're gonna set it precisely. Maybe it's better to leave the origin in the center of the sphere for this. You get to decide the X, you don't get to decide on the X because the X coordinate is how far in and out this is. So that's really gotta be one. However, the Y and the Z, you can make decisions on that. How far near the edge should it be or towards the center? Uh, probably doesn't matter too much, just whatever style you're going for. This is very close to negative 0.5, so let's just go with negative 0.5 and 0.5 just so it's easy to remember. So there's the second dot right there. We're gonna put another dot in the lower left. And I'm gonna do that by duplicating this one. Shift D to duplicate. Now we're dragging, dragging it to the approximate location. And now we can set the exact location. So it looks like it's close to negative one. Zero, nope. Where did that come from? I think that should be 0.5. There we go. You can also click on this one and see it's negative one, negative 0.5, positive 0.5. The uh, X location is not gonna change. The Z is gonna become negative and the Y is gonna become negative. So the Y is positive 0.5 and the Z is negative 0.5. All right, so I have all these three, but why are they not making that Boolean uh, difference? Let's go back to the cube. Here's the Boolean three for the three-sided. Now it's only using sphere nine. Now, if I wanna use all these objects, well, you could do a collection, but what we're gonna do is just combine these three objects together. So select them all. And I think it's J to, control J to join. So now they're one object. Notice the origin is now in the bottom left. So I'm going to, let's see, right click, set origin to geometry. And that should, because they're symmetric, it puts it right in the center. Okay. But there's no hole cut out. So what's going on? Going back to the cube, the object that we originally referenced disappeared because we just built this object right here. So now we drop that in and cover up the spheres. Okay, so we have that. Uh-oh, we don't have the bevel now. This did happen to me before, and the reason is there's some geometry that's unhappy here. We'll apply all transforms. I didn't seem to do anything. Hmm. So the bevel is having an effect. I just deleted it and the number of uh, edges went way down. All right, so there is a geometry issue here that I cannot see and I'm not sure how to fix it. Oh, the top one's broken too, fantastic. So you can see the beveling happening right here where there's some weird problem with the geometry on this side All right, what to do now? I'm not really sure. Let's go into edit mode. Let's get, select all that, delete vertices, select all that, delete vertices. So we just have this one. Now, if you notice, that problem was fixed when this one disappeared. Uh, so let's go ahead and just delete that one right there. Still not happy. Delete vertice. There we go. So that worked. All 
All right, I don't have a good answer for why this is happening. There's a weird error with the geometry that I cannot figure out. So I'm gonna play around a little bit and then continue this video. So our bevel was a little bit messed up because of the way that these are connected here. So what I did is I went to the other side and I subdivided it. I'll show you how to do that. I did have to apply my original bevel. It was at the top and all I did was I went to hit apply and then it, instead of being a modifier, it actually creates this bevel. And what that does when we go into edit mode now, we can just select this face. If we didn't apply the bevel, we'd be selecting the entire face here and that's too much. So now we have the inside part and we're gonna subdivide it, right click subdivide. Now, I wanted to make it into a three by three grid and I figured I could, no matter which number of dots was here, I could do six, one, two, three, four, five, six, the two columns on the edges would be the six, five, I'd do the uh, diagonals in the center, uh, what's four the outsides, three is the diagonal going, uh, upper left to lower right. So that's what I did first. Once I did that, then I went back to edit mode and I will show you the sphere I put in. This is all one object, so I created them separately and then joined them together. I tried to put it in the center of each of these, in the center of the little base that I made. And then this one's, the middle one's right in the direct center. So, these are all sphere 18. Maybe I should probably call it sphere three. Oops, two. And now at the cube, I added a new Boolean and it's the difference and I use sphere three. So I drag sphere three into this one. I made a new one. I probably should call this Boolean three. This is very disorganized. Uh, I'm going to make it visible and you can see that now the bevels are very nice. I'll make sphere three invisible and you can see that they are nice and symmetric. So it's going to look much better. You can use this idea on all sides of this die and no matter which number one through six you're using and it should work. I'd be a little hesitant to subdivide it more because then you would have an extra edge going like cutting through your circle and that may cause other problems. So at least now each dot is cleanly inside of a face. And of course this will limit your beveling because it cannot escape the face that it's inside of.